guys hey guys welcome to all of you on our channel that is achieve ias so friends as you know that on our channel we are targeting the exam of civil services and for that purpose we have multiple series on our channel that target your prelims as well as mains so friends in this video we will be talking about our daily current affair mcqs so this series is about uh, the MCQs based on current affairs in which what we do we daily discuss uh, MCQs based upon the uh, current affairs of the day that uh, that might have appeared in PIB or in uh, any other national newspaper for example Indian Express, The Hindu, The Tribune, uh, Live Mint so di uh, from different sources we prepare these questions so uh, let's start uh, today's discussion the first question is about uh, the fly ash consider the following statements related to fly ash first it is a byproduct of coal burning in thermal power plants second it is mandatory for cement industries within radius of 300 kilometers of a coal or lignite based thermal power plant to use fly ash for manufacturing of the cement as per the spe specifications of the Bureau of Indian Standards third is recently Ministry of Environment Forest and Climate Change has re uh, has launched a mobile application called ash track to monitor usage of fly ash in the country so we have to choose that which of the above statements is correct uh, so friends uh, uh, let me tell you that all these statements are correct because fly ash is basically a byproduct of uh, thermal power plant so it is a very uh, uh, harmful pollutant because due to due to uh, the uh, micro size of its particulate matter it is less than P uh, pm 2.5 so it is very dangerous for uh, f and is responsible for very ma many types of pulmonary diseases and uh, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change uh, has, does, has launched the app that is as strict to monitor usage of fly ash in the country and it has been mandated that uh, cement industries within 300 kilometers of the coal or lignite based thermal power plant must use this fly ash for manufacturing of the, of the cement. So all of these statements are correct. So why it was in news because recently Ministry of uh, Forest, uh, Environment, Forest and Climate change revised the norm for use uh, for usage of fly ash, uh, ash and disposal by granting the permission to use it for agriculture so now it can also be used for agriculture and also it has been made mandatory that power plants uh, must sell the, their free, uh, fly ash free of cost to users within three kilo, 300 kilometer radius so ash track app is there for the for its monitoring let's move on to the second question second question is consider the following satellites and its and its objectives First, AstroSat, multi-wavelength observatory. Second, Navic satellite, Indian regional navigation satellite. Uh, third, HISIS, sun observing satellite. Uh, fourth is Chandrayaan-2 orbiter, moon orbiter. Fifth is Aditya L1, that is Earth observation sat uh, satellite. So we have to choose that which of the fall above pair is correctly matched. So let me tell you, friends, that uh, uh, first is correctly matched. Yes, AstroSat is a multi-wavelength observatory of India, and then Navic sat satellite is Indian regional navigation satellite, and and Chandrayaan 2 is a moon orbiter. So, but the third and fifth are not correctly matched. So, they are incorrectly matched. In fact, uh, the, the pairs with which they have been matched, they are interchanged. So, basically, his is what is does. It is the uh, Earth observation satellite of ISRO uh, that observes light, uh, observe Earth in uh, uh, short, uh, short, uh, this uh, visible uh, uh, wavelength and uh, short, uh, short uh, infrared and short infrared uh, uh, wavelength. So, uh, this Aditya L1 is basically sun observing, observing satellite which observes the corona so the answer would be uh, as third and uh, fifth are incorrectly matched answer would be first second and fourth so solution is b so here is the explanation so this is uh, his is is basically earth observation satellite and to study it basically our surface in visible near infrared and short infrared regions of electromagnetic spectrum whereas the ditta one is meant to observe the only the solar corona that is how it gets heated to such a uh, high temperature uh, to get an answer about that because uh, so Corona is outer part of sun, but uh, it is more warmer than its uh, uh, disk. Uh, that is its main disk, so it is a mystery. And Aditya one tries to solve it. And uh, let's move on to the next question. Next is uh, consider the following statements related to uh, magnetospheric multi-scale mission. First, it is NASA's mission which investigates the sun's and Earth's magnetic field radiate relations with each other. 
second is this mission's knowledge would help in predicting the space weather which is helpful in manned space mission so both of these statements are correct basically this nasa nasa's uh, this mission is that is uh, mms uh, is basically magnetospheric uh, stands for magnetospheric multi scale mission which uh, aims to uh, investigate that how the sun as well as earth's magnetic field uh, uh, kind of react with each other they uh, what are the relations uh, how they interact with each, with each other and also it will help in predicting the space weather because uh, uh, in fact when the uh, kind of uh, uh, this uh, reaction takes place between sun and earth's magnetic field uh, there is high energy explosion which in fact uh, uh, causes interplanetary sh uh, shocks and uh, recently it made the first precise measurement measurement of this interplanetary shock using high resolution instruments so mission is about how a sun and earth's magnetic field connect and disconnect so in the process uh, there is a kind of uh, explosive energy that is released and uh, it uh, it plays an important role in, uh, in 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 disturbing the technological uh, uh, systems that is telecommunication networks gps navigation and electrical power grids so once uh, the we gain understanding of this then this will uh, help us in uh, save, uh, our developing our systems in such a way that they are resilient to this uh, shock these shock waves that are uh, released by interaction of magnetic uh, magnetic field of earth and sun so basically objective is to observing magnetic reconnection in nature to predict uh, knowledge of universal process that is final governor of the space weather so the details you can see in the pdf let's move to the next question next is consider the following statements with respect to water pollution first biological oxygen demand is a measure of uh, finding the quality of water second agriculture is one of the leading cause of non point source for the nitrogen based pollutant into water bodies third is nitrogen in the drinking water leads to blue blue baby syndrome so which of the above statements is correct so we have to choose the correct statement let me tell you friends that all of these statements are correct so basically water pollution the biological the the, the biological pollution that is the organic pollution in the in the water is determined by biological oxygen demand and basically the limit is 8 millimeters uh, and uh, this uh, uh, this the uh, agriculture is one of the leading causes because it uses nitrogen based fertilizers which uh, get leased into uh, due to surface uh, agriculture runoff lead into uh, movement of this nitrogen into the water bodies which causes this uh, 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 harmful algal bloom which ultimately leads to the uh, pollutant uh, pollution of the water body which uh, that is high biological oxygen demand so uh, nitrogen uh, in the drinking water leads to blue baby syndrome this is also correct so recently world bank has released a report on wa uh, water pollution in which uh, which it claims that it is the biggest ever uh, data uh, base assembled on global water quality so its key finding is that this water pollution uh, impacts uh, this economic growth in a significant way uh, because uh, obviously what, uh, you can remember this world bank is relating to the, your economic growth so you can relate it that the basic purpose is to to relate the cause uh, relate the pollution with the with the effect on economic growth so ultimately economic growth gets slowed down health uh, health is uh, uh, health is harmed obviously when health is uh, worsening uh, health worse worsen people saving uh, reduce and then there is reduce in food production exas exacerbating uh, poverty in many countries so uh, this uh, in some countries leading to economic growth slow down by a third so uh, the threshold it has kept is milligrams not milliliters sorry for uh, uh, the mistake that i have earlier used the word milliliter but it is 8 milligram per liter so if there is uh, uh, the biological oxygen demand more than 8 milligram per liter then it will uh, it will be uh, called a polluted water body so growth in the downstream regions drop by 0.83 percent due to it so it is a cue contributor to poor water quality in nitrogen and creates hypoxia and hypoxia conditions and dead dead zones and uh, air is also polluted due to the release of nitrogen and this uh, uh, it forms nitrous oxide and then there is also if uh, uh, child uh, ch if children are earlier exposed to this nitrogen so they develop uh, various types of uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, ailments like uh, stunting in the uh, growth stunting develops and then their brain damage takes place so this uh, basically causes uh, then uh, 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 the uh, uh, the blue baby blue blue baby syndrome because stunting and brain development uh, uh, development is hampered and then stunting takes place and also then uh, it is uh, it is said that World Bank has estimated that one kg of nitrogen uh, do do increase per hectare do increase the yield by five percent but then it uh, it it, it 
causes uh, the uh, it uh, it it reduces the growth in children by by 19%. So stunting increases by 19% and further adult earnings may fall up to 2% compared to those not affected. So why I'm going into detail because this is an important report. So all these such a, such kind of reports are can be used by you people uh, while writing your mains. So uh, such type of uh, statements carry weight and uh, they also help you fetching better marks. So then there is also uh, estimation that enough food is lost due to salinity. That is one uh, the food uh, to the tune uh, to the tune of uh, uh, that is that is capable to feed 170 million population is uh, lost due to salinity. So key recommendations are various, so you can read them. Let's move on to the next fifth question. Fifth question is consider the following statements related to tuberculosis diseases. First, it is caused by protozoa which is transmitted through drinking water. Second, TB is non-treatable and non-curable disease. Third, extensively drug resistance TB leads to death of the infected person even if treated properly. So which of the statements is correct? Let me tell you friends that all these statements are incorrect. It is not caused by protozoa but it is caused by bacteria. And yes, it is treatable and curable and if it is treated properly, then the uh, death can be prevented. But if it is not treated properly, then death uh, can happen. So the solution is D none of the above so uh, as I told you all these things uh our explanation so no uh, let's waste not waste time here the uh, next question is consider the following statements related to one maha Utsav. first it is an annual tribal festival started by ministry of tribal affairs second it creates awareness about the tribal culture and their handicrafts so which of the above statements is correct so friends let me tell you that uh, this question may confuse you but uh, both these statements are incorrect one Maha Utsav is not uh, uh, organized by Ministry of Tribal, Tribal Affairs. It is basically a festival which, uh, which, which focuses, annual festival which focuses on planting of trees. So it was basically started by K, uh, K M, I think K M Munshi. Yes, the Union Minister for Agriculture and Food at that time. Uh, first time it was started in 1950. So one Mahotsav is basically an annual tree planting festival. So purpose was to create awareness about the conservation purpose uh, need for conservation of forest and planting of new trees. Next is uh, which of the following not not constitutes the direct tax? A corporation tax, B securities transaction tax, uh, C capital gain tax, D minimum alternate tax, E service tax. So let me tell you friends that uh, uh, the here answer would be service tax because corporation tax, security transaction tax, uh, your uh, capital gain tax, minimum alternate tax. Apart from that, uh, fringe benefit tax. Oh, uh, tax all these fall in direct taxes so the solution is e that is service tax so it is a di diagram that i have included so you can see direct and indirect taxes direct taxes income tax and then it uh, then your corporate tax that is withholding tax personal income tax corporate sector tax minimum alternate tax fringe benefits tax dividend distribution tax and then securities transaction tax wealth tax capital gains tax let's move on to the next question next is saracen is recently in news uh, it is about a, a silk protein which is known to possess antioxidant and other medicinal properties b vaccine to cure skin diseases c new element in periodic table d new spe species of orchid found in northeast india so let me tell you friends that the answer is a that is saracen is basically a silk protein which is uh, known to possess the antioxidant and other medicinal properties so solution is a basically it is a pro silk protein which possesses antioxidant and other medicinal properties so it depend upon the amino acid composition so not all saracen are uh, 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 the capable but uh, it depends upon amino acid composition and uh, secondary metabolites of saracen so which differ from different sources of silk so they vary so, uh, with source of silk worms and their variability depends on the length of the saracen pepti pepti peptides Let's move to the next question. Next is consider the following statements related to airports in Northeast India. First, the proposed Greenfield Airport of Holongi in Arunachal Pradesh is the first airport in Arunachal Pradesh. Second, Arunachal Pradesh has no direct air connectivity. Let me tell you friends that both of these are incorrect. It is not the first airport that is being proposed in Arunachal Pradesh. Already there is a uh, 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 airport uh, that is uh, first was there Tezu. So the solution is D, neither one nor two. So, so Tezu airport was the first civilian airport and uh, uh, obviously uh, when uh, there is already one civilian orbit, so the, uh, or, uh, airport then surely connectivity will be there. So but though the uh, connectivity is not that much, but yes, uh, it uh, uh, connectivity issue de remains there, but it can be sorted out because of its prom proximity to other airports such as Dibrugad airport and Mohanbari airport. 
and next question is consider the following statements related to national register of citizens uh, first national register of citizens is a replacement for a decadal, decadal census to identify the citizens of india second decadal census does not differentiate between indian resident and illegal immigrant so we have to choose the correct answer let me tell you friends that both of in, both of these are incorrect so nrc is uh, just it is a, a national register of citizens uh, for the state of assam so it is not a replacement for decadal census to identify the citizens of india and uh, yes decadal uh, the census uh, uh, differentiate between indian resident and illegal immigrants so the answer would be neither one nor two so the solution is d so basically nrc was first prepared in 1951 but then uh, the demand has again increased so supreme court ordered that uh, nrc must be prepared uh, in 2013 it ordered so deadline that is uh, now uh, has been placed is 24 march 1971 midnight so only those persons who are who are in uh, uh, record as citizens of assam before this date could be uh, can be there in this list updated list so uh, there must be existence in the name existence of name in the legacy data legacy data is basically those uh, that data uh, that is relating to 19, 1951 census and uh, you are uh, that is related to 90, 1951 nrc or for that matter the electoral rolls up to the midnight of 24 march 1979 71 so why this uh, and also other uh, person other person who can uh, can can prove the linkage between the person whose name appears in the and previous nrc or legacy data can also be declared citizen can also be included uh, in nrc so why uh, the date has been included because uh, 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 in 1971 during the end of pak war uh, there was huge migration of uh, uh, Banglad uh, bangladeshi citizens to 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 uh, to the uh, northeastern state so that's why uh, Assam Accord was signed in 1985, so for, the, for that purpose, uh, March 24, 1971 was, was uh, uh, marked the cut of date. So friends, this is all about uh, today's uh, questions. If you like these questions, if you like the video, then do ensure that you like it, share it with your friends. And lastly, if you want the PDFs of these discussions, then you can contact us at gyes21 at the rate gmail.com or you can also contact us at 8968920720. So basically, there will be a small subscription fee that is 99 rupees per month. So that has been kept for the purpose of our motivation as well as for the purpose of your affordability. So if in case you are willing to get the PDF, then you can contact us but but the link will also be provided in the description box so that you can use that link to join uh, the pdf core uh, pdfs uh, for these current affairs and lastly uh, 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 this is a telegram channel the show link is shown on your screen you can join it we post updates uh, in this telegram channel daily and also you can visit our website that is www.gyes.co.in so this is all about friends today's video thank you have a very nice day ahead